Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss a very important algorithm in machine learning called gradient descent. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to describe how a linear regression model can be trained by gradient descent. So gradient descent, this is like the machine learning workhorse. So it goes well beyond the use case for uh, uh, linear regression. So here's some notes about it. First, if you have a convex function, uh, this can find a global minima or maxima depending on um, you know, the shape of the function, whether it's convex or concave. If you have a non-convex function, this can find a local minima or maxima. And then it can be used, again, more than just linear regression, but logistic regression. It's highly used in deep learning. It can be used for gradient-boosted variants of other algorithms, such as decision trees. And also, uh, it can be used for customized probabilistic models uh, through the use of a log likelihood. So a little bit of review, the gradient vector. So if we have a function, uh, the gradient vector and we have a set of weights, the gradient vector is going to return uh, a vector that, ha uh, if those for each of those uh, partial derivatives of that function, if the weights are plugged into that partial derivative. So here's a quick example. So we have this function, it's w1 squared plus w2 squared plus w1 times w2. And here's the associated gradient vector function. Notice that each position is associated with the partial derivative with respect to uh, the parameter for that position. So the, position, the top position here is the partial derivative with respect to w1. The bottom is the derivative with respect to w2. OK, with that little bit in mind, let's define the algorithm. So as input, we have a function f, which is what we're trying to find the, uh, the local minima for. We have some initial vector of weights. So this is just kind of a guess. And there's a bunch of work on different ways to come up with the initial weight vector. And particularly in deep learning, this is quite important. You have the step size, which dictates um, you know, the, the change uh, in the gradient at each step of the algorithm, and also affects the convergence. And then you have the convergence criteria, which is, OK, when do we stop changing the weights? And this deals with, we don't want to change the weights more than that E value. So here's the algorithm. So step one is we have this helper variable called r that's just to keep track of the number of iterations. And then if r equals 0, or if the absolute value of all of, uh, if the absolute value of the difference between the weights for the current and the last weight vector we've created is greater than uh, e, then we do the following. We iterate r by 1, and now we have a new weight vector that is produced by taking the weight vector of the previous iteration and subtracting uh, the step size multiplied by the gradient vector of the uh, weight vector for the last iteration. And that's really it. What is this doing is it's iteratively, it's iteratively finding values that get closer and closer to when that derivative is zero. So let's look at a quick example. So here is this uh, two-dimensional function, w squared minus w minus 2. The derivative is written below. And on the screen is some actual Python code you can also use on your own to follow along. So we start out with our weight vector is initiated at negative 5. So you know, way up here somewhere. Uh, we have a step size of 0.1 and convergence of 0.05. So in that weight 
changes by less than 0 0.05 or 0, 0.05 rather, we stop. We have some definitions. We've defined W and we've defined the derivative, hard coded here. And the rest is that while loop that you saw in the previous slide. Not a big deal. So, with that Python code implemented, this is what we get. We see the old W value, and we see what it changes to, and we see the resulting derivative. And as you see, as this progresses onward, that derivative, the value of the derivative, gets smaller and smaller until it stops. It's almost at zero. So we have, you know, so it's very close to the global minimum for this function. Now, if we had made the step size uh, maybe smaller, or if we set a convergence criteria to be smaller, it would have got it right to zero. Now, what's going on here is essentially, uh, especially if you're thinking of something in multiple dimensions, is gradient descent is taking steps down the gradient to find a minimum value. And what you see here is a set of contour lines for a three-dimensional uh, function. And this is like looking at it from a bird's eye view and seeing the path that gradient descent is taking downward in that function. So how is this used to solve linear regression? Well, you have your samples, you have uh, x1 through xn, and you have your n size ground truth vector, y. And we're looking at this function to be minimized. This is mean squared error. And we're going to find the derivative of that function, or the partial derivative, with respect to each component of w. And just here is that just shown in a little different notation. So one issue with, uh, with using gradient descent for mean squared error is the summation here because you're summing over all samples. And if you have a very large amount of training data, uh, this could become computationally expensive. The good news here is that you can do things like random sampling, which is what stochastic gradient descent is for. And separate from that, you can also do parallelization to significantly speed up the process. This becomes very important when you're looking at something like deep learning, where you could have a large number of samples, and you hear these things about companies like Google and Facebook that train their models on millions and millions of samples. So that concludes our lecture on gradient descent. Stay tuned for more content.